it is the this new flatter decentralized organization that uh, is so prevalent. So are you are you talking to a lot of people that are forming those? Like, what are some of the some of the stories around DAOs that you're you're hearing? Yeah, we are seeing um, a lot of DAOs, um, and people want to use DAOs for for different things. You know, some people are wanting to start like investment club DAOs where they want to invest in like crypto or they want to invest in nfts together some people want to start DAOs um to do some kind of like real world investing uh there's been a lot of interest in using in using DAOs for real estate um there are a lot of questions there when it comes to like securities laws um people i i would think people are getting really excited because they see DAOs as a mechanism for raising capital which maybe it is, but you know there are definitely legal questions there that need to be reviewed. Um, but a lot of people are wanting to use DAOs because because of the ethos, you know that that it matches. Uh, they like the decentralization aspect. You know they like there not being a, a hierarchy where all of your members own something together. And so when you bring a lot of you know highly motivated people together into a DAO where they can work together and they live all over the world and they can trust each other because of, you know, the blockchain. And so, you know, they can use a multi-sig wallet, like, you know, all of these different applications that make it possible for them to trust each other. What can they achieve? And so they feel like they can achieve a lot. And I think they can achieve a lot. Um, so there's definitely a lot of DAOs, a lot of interest in DAOs. And that's one of the things that I think um, still hasn't fully developed. Like we still don't know what the true best use cases for DAOs will be. And uh, it's it's one of the things that's definitely in in experimental mode. But, but I think it will be like, it very well could be the type of organization of the future. Yeah, it is. It, and I think you're hitting on something really important, which is that not everything is better as a DAO. Right. Um, but... You, we're, you better believe we're going to all try to see what is best. I mean, I think there is, there's a few different classes of DAOs, right? There is the, uh, hey, I had an NFT collection. Now I have a group of people tied to, together through this. So they're a DAO, which is to me like probably the least promising of them. Um, unless there is some specific intent with the NFT collection to form the DAO ahead of time, if that makes sense. Um, and then you've got kind of the how can because of smart contracts and because of blockchain technology we can distribute and make make it trustworthy to have a more diverse set of people make a decision what's possible because of that which is the investment clubs um and stuff like that um and then there's like kind of the hey i'm gonna just take this old business model and I'm going to see if it's better as a DAO. Um, some of the most interesting ones I've seen there are uh, creative agencies. Um, my first guest on the podcast, he works with one called Vector DAO, and it is essentially a creative agency. And they have created a structure where they are running their creative agency uh, with clients coming in, and they use these things called seasons to do it. And you get the options to get paid for your work, uh, or you can get carry. Right. Um, so it's uh, it's a super interesting idea. And I think um, we will see over the next couple of years uh, what can happen there. And then I, I would be remiss not to to, to mention City Dow as well. Um, they, they're obviously uh, they're figuring out exactly what they are, but they own the piece of land and they are trying to form a city that is virtual more or less, and not in the, hey, I'm going to build a city in the metaverse type thing, but hey, what happens when we, we organize people according to a more decentralized format and then apply the basics of what makes a city, yeah. right? And I, and I like what they're doing. And like, it's, you know, you can tell they, they're figuring it out as mm -hmm. they go, you know, as they, they jumped into something, they got started and they're figuring it out. I mean, we have a lot of a lot of DAOs, and I'm sure you've seen, that aren't really DAOs. Like they call themselves DAOs, but they're not decentralized. And so they're not really DAOs. And so maybe- and they're not autonomous. <laughs> they're not autonomous, yeah. <laughs> so 
you know, I've been hearing a lot about progressive decentralization recently. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't know. I don't know if there is um, a good like use a good like case study of one that has been successful. Mm -hmm. But I think you know at some point we might see something that that worked out where you know they call themselves a DAO, but initially they're very centralized. Which mm -hmm. to some extent it does. I mean, it does make sense to start centralized because you do need people to take action. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And if you have hundreds of the people that in a DAO that's like just started, like how do you take any action if you have hundreds of people that are all on equal footing, you know? And so it makes sense sometimes to start centralized and maybe progressively decentralized, decentralized into a true DAO. And so how is that done? You know, I don't know, maybe you slowly give up tasks and tokens and then eventually everyone is on the same level playing field with no hierarchy, then you might be truly decentralized. And, you know, that might be a successful case of progressive decentralization, but I've yet to see that. And I, but I think we will see more of that.